stand on the totem pole. That's me. Okay, we're, we're running. Don't shut those doors. All right, man, I, I'm Troy Taylor. I used to be the head football coach at L.C. Bird High School. My high school coach, Rich Virginia. This man is the greatest of all time. So Martin Luther King said, dude, everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be famous. This man right here, he makes people famous. He makes people famous. Because Martin Luther King said, everybody wants to be famous. But not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And this man is the greatest of all time. You'd name another offensive line coach, and I'll tell you why he's better than him. Dante Scarnecki learned from him. Alex Gibbs learned the outside zone from him. He's the greatest of all time because of service. He didn't charge nobody $5,000 a year. He gave it for free. Why? Because he loved it. That's what makes him the greatest of all time. This is Jim McNally. He's so great, he don't even have to wear a shirt or look like he's great. Because the greatest of all time walks amongst his people. Amen. And he is us, and we are him. Standing ovation for the government. Standing for the government. The greatest of all time. Who do you want to be like? This is who you want to be like. Not some guy on TV. Ninety percent of that is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but a little bit about me, um, and I'm not a guy who wants to hear somebody come to a clinic and give you a lot of bullshit philosophy. Fucking. Yeah. Uh, no, I I've been to a thousand clinics, and I've used my. Uh, iPad, screen, plays, done. I know how to do that. I don't know how to hook up on the, on the uh, projector and all that stuff. I don't know how to do that. Oh, fuck, I'm in the way, dude. What I'm going to do today is hands on, okay? I'm going to grab you. You're going to grab me. We're going to grab somebody out of the audience. And while coach, show some film on it. I ain't doing that. I'm making you, I'm going to make you feel or watch what it feels like when you ask a question or when I cover a subject. And then we're going to jump. If I cover something, somebody's going to say, well, coach, what about this? I'll answer that question. So before we start, okay, as long as it's not a long one, okay, because a lot of guys come to clinics and they don't hear what they got a question about because coaches can only cover so much in their topic. Like Coach Sollier, his last topic was unbelievable. He covered the inside zone as good as any I've ever seen, all right? He's right here, I got a shirt on. But what if somebody wanted to say, well, Coach, what do you do on pass pro versus, well, I mean, you can't do that, okay, when you're just doing one topic. So while I got you, in here, okay? Questions on anything? Raise your hand. Who's got one? Offensive line. Nobody? Coach, how can you teach them to be a dog if you ain't a dog? And can you teach them to be a dog? Teach them to be a dog. They are a dog. Uh, a prick. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, they are what they are, yeah. okay? And, and, and when you get them, if they've been trained by their mother and their father, to, hey, do what the coach says, fine. If not, put the next guy in. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't gonna make, you gonna make, you ain't gonna make somebody a prick that isn't a prick. Yeah. I guarantee you that. That's my experience. You have a question back here. Wide zone versus four technique. Wide zone versus a four technique. Okay, first of all, on a wide zone, okay? Me, okay? So, let's say I got a four. Okay, now, the wide zone people, okay? I know this. <laughs> when I was at the Bengals with Icky Woods and James Brooks and a guy named Stanley Wilson, we ran it better than anybody else back in the day, 
okay? And we would run a wide handoff, you know, butt of the tight end or whatever, okay? And when you would reach a guy, they would go with you, okay? And you widen the hole and the ball would go inside or outside. Well, that's not what good defenses do now. So now I don't call the wide zone the wide zone. I call it the mid zone. And what I mean by the mid zone is I'm still running somewhere over here, outside leg of the tackle, inside leg of the tight end, but I ain't trying to do that bullshit. Okay, I'm not trying to get the back to run so wide that seven out of 10 times he's gonna run out of bounds, okay? Because the defensive guys now, let's put them in a five first, the good ones, okay? So if we've got defensive coaches here, when the ball is snapped, that guy ends up right there, okay? And what the old school guys do, they have this guy, let's say there's a linebacker, they have this guy, we call it, they call it run for the screws of their pads. And then this guy is this. And then this guy, you see what this guy's doing? He makes him block him. The ball cuts up and this guy falls back. Yep. Period. End of story. So if I'm going to block a four technique, okay. And I get up here, Brandon. No, no, I don't need him. Okay. And say he's a coach with me, okay? I'm going to have this guard right here because I'm assuming if there's a four, you think there's probably going to be a linebacker, right? Okay. This guy shuffles, okay? He kicks slides, whatever the hell you want to call that. And he keys the linebacker. All the things I do on zone, where's your linebacker? Where's your linebacker? Where's your linebacker? So as this guy starts to kind of kick slide, which wide zone coaches will say, well, fuck, he said, get him out of the way. Get that guard out of the way. He's in the running back's way. That's bullshit, all right? My point I'm saying is this guy right here will now root his feet on this guy. What I mean by rooting his feet, okay, if coach right here and I am the right tackle and we're running – what I would call wide zone, as I start, I just start firing my feet, okay? And I will put two hands on them. This hand, go ahead and grab my shoulder. This hand will come up because most good defensive linemen pull my hand back down or they stick in the chest. So as I'm coming with a double under, whatever, I'm firing my feet. My feet are not going forward. They're rooting, boom, boom, all right? Now if you grab, boom. And this hand comes up underneath him. Okay. Now, when that happens, this linebacker, this guard, is he kick slides like back, back. He's keying that backer. If that backer scrapes, he goes and he puts one to two hands on this down guy, okay, and pushes him, okay. But we don't have, bottom line is, we don't have this guy escape. We don't have this guy put his hat outside. He, he'll put his hat outside, but we don't have him cross his feet and leave because this guy now will occupy the guard and the ball cuts back eight out of 10 times. Why do you think the ball cuts back a lot when you have, when you have a four or five technique? Because this guy right here, the J.J. Watts of the world knocked this guy's ass so far back, okay? If you have this guy right here run sideways with that block, you can run anything. But the good outside linebackers or whatever these, you call them that, when this guy goes to block, they two gap his ass back. And when you run real wide, this guy knocks your ass back. So the ball cuts up. Okay, the guards committed to that guy. Okay, the tackles going to get this guy. This guy falls back and makes the tackle. Yeah. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. <laughs> Do we all understand what I just said on wide zone versus the four? Same thing on a four eye. Okay, you got a guy right here. He's on the inside eye 
of this guy right here, okay? And there, let's say there's a linebacker, whatever. It's the same thing, that this right tackle, this, I mean, this guy's kind of in that gray area. Well, old school people go, you go him, you go him, and boom. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what happened. And this guy two gaps his ass right back, okay? It makes him block him. He's going to this guy, but because of this guy two gapping the tight end, or let's say the guard's covered, and this guy two gapping the tackle, that means they knock your dick back. Hmm. The end of the line, man, fucking just fucking beelines right through your face, but he keeps outside leverage and it stops the wide zone. You can't hook this guy. Mm -mm. If you try to hook this guy, okay, that's two gapping you, but I mean, you got a guy outside and you tell this guy, go reach him. This guy will knock your ass back. Well, so what? You're still blocking them, but where's the ball carrier running? So what happens is when you run the wide zone, the end blocker, your end blocker, gets his ass knocked back right into where the running back is running. Do we understand what I'm talking about? You get bookended. The end blocker gets bookended by the end man when the Whoever is your end blocker, a tackle to the weak side or a tight end, they JJ Watt you <laughs> or they whatever. They don't do oh, Lawrence fuck. Taylor. I'll just keep nice. No, that's not what's happening <laughs> against the good defenses. Have I made it too confusing? So do you still do you still teach any cover to uncover? Oh yes. The uncovered guy, the uncovered guy, like a center, let's say the Chiefs do it. Well, they used to do it better than they're doing it now, actually. Okay, so let's say you had a one technique and a, a well, let's say we have a three and a one, okay? And the backer is here, okay? I don't ever like to have your linebacker for the center be behind you. I don't like that. My backer is always in front of me. Or I, di I diagnose that you know, I got two backers. I'm going to the front backer, okay? But bottom line is, let's say this center here, and this is a one, and he pinches and he loops out, okay? That center, as he shuffles, gets depth, depth, because the ball's wider now than a tight zone that Coach Saulnier was just talking about, where you could stay on the line of scrimmage more. The ball is wider, so I got to get more depth and width. If this guy comes, I go back and I hopefully hand check him rather than shoulder check him. I rewind, all right? Okay, let's say I'm going to the one technique, okay? And there's a three back side, okay? My backer's over here. I shuffle the center on a deep shuffle, okay? If the, if, if, if the three pinches, I rewind back on the three. I mean, this guy's right in my face. I stick a hand on him before I go to that backer because when he's looped out, there's a void for me to, I can come back and hand check him, okay? So it'd be no different than if I'm like, if, if he's the three, and I go like this, this, and he comes pinch to me. I mean, pretend like <laughs> so. Boom. So I'm like, but boom. And then I, I have body presence because I shuffle on a wide zone or a mid zone. I get depth. If it was a tight zone, I would stay square on the line of scrimmage. So a lot of the questions you got to ask about the guy that's covered, okay, is got to do with where is the linebacker. Mm. And that's why in the NFL, okay, the two-gap technique has killed the wide zone. Mm. And what I mean by two-gap is that, that someone like a defensive end or tackle, whatever you want to call them, right there, okay, or a tight end. Watch this one here. Here's the biggest culprit. 
common sense, really. Let's say you've got a tight end with a seven, okay? And you've got a linebacker somewhere here, you know? He's not, say, out here where you could just release for him, okay? So what most people do is maybe the tight end puts a hand on him and he goes to that guy, tackle goes and gets that guy, and here goes the running back. Right up in there, this guy falls right back and makes the tackle. Did you get a double highlight there, Coach? Double highlight. No, this guy's going to shuffle. Okay. He's going to shuffle, okay? He's going to put one hand on him, and the tight end is going to do what? He's not going to leave. He might even use inside footwork. You understand, I'm running a mid-zone. I got a seven. I, as the tight end, am going to use inside footwork. So this is the tight end, the linebacker's back there, ball is snapped. Okay, I'm probably just gonna use one hand. Okay, you see what I'm saying here. If that backer goes, let's say he goes, I'm gonna U him out. I'm gonna turn him out. Ball can go here. But I'm not gonna vacate to get that guy. Because this guy right here is going to end up making the tackle. I'm, excuse me, he, this guy right here is going to occupy the tackle coming to get him. If you just fire out on, if the tackle just fires out to get him and I just leave, okay, then this guy's going to fall right back and make the play. Coach, use the term you amount. Explain to the audience you amount means. Well, you out means that, let's say for some reason, this guy ends up on this backer right here. We're going to U him out. We're not going to try to pin him. Right. Now, does everybody understand what I'm talking about when I say two gap? Two gap. Basically, they end up with their inside arm free. Basically, they come straight ahead. And most people that teach the wide zone teach the uncovered guy just to fire out and try to kill that down lineman to their outside. But what happens is the ball cuts up the majority of the time when you go to kill the down guy. Let's say I'm old school and there's a seven technique. So I'm the right to, and I go to kill this guy. So, so you've knocked him out a little bit. Here comes the ball inside. What do you think that linebacker does? Falls right back. Because you've escaped this guy. Because this seven technique didn't widen. He didn't go out because the tackle put his head outside and everybody nicely flows, blah, blah, blah. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do your way. I'm just telling you what in the NFL has stopped the wide zone. Even San Francisco, if you charted their place in the Super Bowl, which I did not, they may have won maybe two that worked, and probably because of the running back himself. <laughs> so someone asked me a question about a four technique on a wide zone, which I'll call a mid zone, okay? I don't think it matters which foot you step with, but my feet would go, blah, 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 and I'm going to lunge into the ball. I mean, I'm going to... Okay, but I'm not going to rip, vacate, put a hand on him, try to leave to get the second level. Any questions? Defensive coaches in here. How many are defensive coaches? Okay. He knows. Yeah. Same concept. Yeah. How do you teach your mom to squeeze spray? How are we handling that? Squeeze? Yeah, so the, the defensive linemen are going to go to the center, okay. linebacker straight over the top. All right. So where's the defensive line? Say it's three technique. And three. You got three to five. You got a defense. All right. They're both going to slant inside. Down. Oh, absolutely. And then the linebackers over the top. All right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the the bottom line is, okay, this center is going to shuffle. All right. This guy may go to his backside gap. In fact. Probably done, prop, done properly, 
correct me if I'm wrong, this guy sometimes ends up on the backside. This guy sometimes ends up in the A gap. Okay? So when the center shuffles, he sometimes picks up this end, okay, that goes clear across the guard's face. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is when the guard goes to block this guy, okay, and we call it a hook block, okay? And, and our hook block would be, I would start to lose some drop and I'd stab my outside arm to stay square to knock his shoulder back. But as I'm, as I'm stabbing like this, and I'm off the ball, because on the mid or wide zone, I'm behind the line because I got to protect my front side gap. So as I go boom, boom, he goes inside. I, as the guard, I shove him to the center, and I'm right in position to pick up the pinch. I don't, OK? So when I say I go from hooking this guy, boom, boom, OK? One, two, boom. Fuck, this guy's going to run right into me because I'm off the ball vertically. And if this guy goes so far inside of me, boom, here, I push him to the center and get the next guy. So it's on mid or wide zone, it's how far off the ball you are, okay, vertically, that as legal as you can, and you can pick up any shit if you just stood there. They're going to come to you, I got it. but not if the guard versus the three fires out or the tackle versus the five <laughs> fires out to get the backer, you got to stay on the line of scrimmage. So I convert a power hook, a hook, okay? Like you would all use a reach, you know, trying to reach, <laughs> well, you're trying to reach the guy, right? Because you want to make a move, right? Because the ball's going wide, square. Everything I do or teach, or if I were to teach again, you never turn your pads. You're teaching, Coach. You, you never turn it. your pads. You never turn your fucking pads. Never turn your pads. The only time you ever turn your pads, you're on the back side of a mid or wide zone where you've got to make some sort of a, you know, you're not point of attack blocker. If you're running tight zone, the way I would run tight zone, no one turns their pads. No one turns their pads. The only one that turns their pads might be the backside tight end because he's he's pretty far away. Because the backside guard and tackle, the way I would run it, tight zone, they're point of attack blockers. Yep. They're point of attack blockers. Really, for me, point of attack blockers on the tight zone is the center, the back guard, and the back tackle. The front side guard is not point of attack blocker. Even though sometimes on Steve's plays, the ball jumped outside, I am that if I'm the front side guard, I'm not going to step way inside, but we're going to tell that running back on a tight zone, if, if, if Troy's the center, that we're going to kind of shuffle back a little bit, I don't know, maybe about five yards, and I'm running for the backside leg of the center, the backside leg of the center. I don't want to take it over there. I don't want to take it over there. I only take it over there if everybody pinches so damn hard. So I'm really hitting the back door on a tight zone. Now that's I'm not off the topic, but you see the problem with a tackle and tight end blocking a seven and a linebacker on a stretch play where the tight end just releases, where the tackle blocks him, okay, and the ball ends up going up inside, okay, because the ball goes outside like that. Uh, this guy right here makes him whatever, and we can't get this guy. I, I didn't explain that very well. Let's start over again. The two-gap guy, okay, he two-gaps this guy. He makes him block him, but he doesn't just go like that. He almost occupies I'm these two, my battery these from two the guys because this guy hits that gray area that makes the ball cut up in here. Because you can't reach that guy. He goes straight ahead. Okay? Like Reggie White, if this was the left tight end, and I blasted straight ahead, 100 miles an hour, just knock his ass back. This, all this tackle can do would be knock me out. And when he knocks me out, ball cuts up. Backer falls back. 
Am I lost to anybody? I know I have. <laughs> but it's because of the defenses that take away that play. Am I clear on that at all? Yeah. So you have to pick one play where we're trying to decide now. Tight zone versus mid zone. What's the turning factor and why do you do which? Uh, well, at first, if I had to run one play, I wouldn't run either of those plays. <laughs> I'd run duo. Yeah. Okay. okay, but that, that's a good play. <laughs> I guess if I had to run one play, it probably would be the mid zone. The only thing is that on the tight zone, okay, let's say everybody pitched, okay, and the ball goes outside, I'm sorry, and the ball stays inside, okay, uh, uh, whatever. They're pitching, okay, the ball, we shut off the pitch, however we do it. We don't overtake the pitch because it's a tight zone. This linebacker we're going for falls right back in the hole. Because you never get the linebacker when they pinch the front side because he sees the ball go back and he doesn't scrape off because he reads the running back. Fuck the running back sitting in the back door. I'm straight, uh, the line scrapes. This backer's ready to, the line pinches. This backer's ready to scold me. Fuck. What? Fuck, there goes the running back. He throws right back here, tackles the ball. Okay. Well, I would run the mid zone because that at least gets a stretch. Mid zone is something but the wide zone, perhaps cutting the angle of the running back down to the inside leg of the tight end or the backside leg of the outside leg of the tackle. And the linemen, though, are not doing this. Mm. Another thing is, let's say this is a three technique and I'm the right guard. And I use the old school reach, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you call it, reach. Come straight ahead. Right kick. He knocks my ass down. So, I mean, they take those three techniques and they knock them back. The ball carrier can hardly make a move because the down guy, the, the offensive blocker has turned his pads rather than, you can okay to hook them, okay? And I, I, I'll demonstrate a hook block. Uh, Brandon. This is all shit I had to fucking come up with. I mean, this is, this is not, let me move you back here, boy. Turn over like this. Okay, so I'm running. Get up if you need to, y'all. Okay, I'm running a mid zone. Okay, let's say this guy's loose. Okay, what would you think the best technique would be on this guy? Mid zone now, and he's almost in the gap. He's a loose three on the right guard. Well, the ball's coming over here, but it's kind of under control. What do you think the best technique on this guy would be? Deep shuffle. Match him out. Where is the ball going? Inside the three technique. Okay, you with me? You think that if that guard's got a guy that's too wide, take him where he wants to go. Fucking ball gonna cut right up the middle. Okay, because I'm gonna displace his ass. <laughs> like, oh, boom, boom. like Coach Saulier was mm. doing. Uh, whether you get your hand on your forearm or whatever. Okay, but let's say the, the three technique is in a position where. I think I can hook him, reach him, whatever. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna drop my right foot. Okay, brace it, whatever the hell you wanna call it. My second foot's gonna come over a little bit. I gotta get square on a man that's square. I gotta get a guy, I gotta get square on a man that's not square to me. Everything I'm doing is square. I can't get square on him. Now, I don't need to be square on him on the tight zone because the tight zone sits in the back door. I can throw him out. Let's fast forward to wide zone. Wide zone, if he's wide, 
throw his ass out. Ball cuts underneath, okay? But let's say the ball is going over here and I can reach him. Okay, so I would drop this foot, this foot would come over so I'm square. My third step, boom. Okay, my hands are always boom, boom, boom. Okay, one, two, boom. My outside leg is forward. The outside leg is forward to knock the outside pad back. Okay, what do you think this guy thinks I'm doing? Well, he sees the running back. Trying to see he's, not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not stupid, right? He kind of sees everything. So what, where do you think he goes? What do you think I do then? Throw him out. Ball comes underneath. He's big into that. But when I go to hook a guy, if I'm square, and he fights so really, the hook is a false key. You see what I'm doing? I'm giving him the illusion. Oh, I'm really trying to get. Here comes a running man. Oh, the fuck! I better get over here. Throw his ass out. Now, if you do get him hooked, if you get the three hooked, so I'm here, here, boom, and I get that whatever that position is on him, the ball can stay out here. So, a reach block for me is only. Let's say I'm the right tackle, okay? And I got that guy. And I'm on the mid or right, I try to reach him, okay? All right, somewhere there, I'm going to match him out, like Coach Solomon had in the last time. I'm going to throw him out. Predetermined, throw him out, okay? I'm not going to do this on J.J. Watt if I'm the coach. <laughs> this. What do you think he's going to do to me? <laughs> Come on, JJ. <laughs> if I, and where's my ass when I turn on an angle? In the hole. Right? The fucking hole. <laughs> right? Right. Stay as square as you can for as long as you can. If you don't know what to do, don't turn your pads, which you all do. <laughs> okay? The squarer you are, the stronger you are. Okay? It's, it's kind of physics, right? I block on an angle, and a guy, boom, he will flatten me right out. Now, if he goes with my head, that's nice. But don't see that. Okay? So, I mean, I'm jumping around here, but ask, that's okay. Ask, 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 ask. Because ask. I'm going to lose some of you, but at least I'm making an impression maybe about staying square. If a guy goes underneath you, you're trying to reach him, hook him, he goes underneath you. Put him on the next guy. He's got so much momentum going. And then because I'm square, square and off the ball, the next guy will come right to me. I mean. I can't avoid blocking the next pitcher. Fuck, he, he runs right into me. And if he goes clear underneath me, I push him to the next guy. You don't even have to coach it for 10 minutes and you just tell your guys to stay square. And then they'll figure out when they gotta turn the guy out or when they gotta push the guy back in, which we call stuffing. I lost anybody. I don't mind that I've lost you. I just want to know. He's got a question you about you duo. You wouldn't run uh, inside or, or the uh, mid zone. You said you'd run duo. Can, can well, we I would run duo as would... my base play, strictly because there's not as many tackles for losses on it. But duo is a 20 hour discussion. He invented it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, we to... yeah, we... He just did six hours, didn't yeah. you? Duo is your running power without pulling the mm. guard. Okay, but there's so many variables. Like I give you an example. He did five hours on Monday. Um, One duo. Yeah. Every Monday night he does a podcast, y'all. Yeah. It's two dollars to get, watch him. Go to Coach Tube. Sign up. He does five hours every Monday. Been seeing you late. Eighty years old, no. Huh? Okay, let's say you're running duo. We run duo in front of the guard. 
okay? And let's say the tight end has to block a seven. This guy covers him up, the post man. Post, this is the drive man. He uses a high leg chip or, you know, the, okay? And the center on the backside guard, say against that defense, okay? Say the guard covers him and the, the center chips to that guy, whatever. But you see this seven technique right here? Tight end can't block. Tight end can't block a six. Not in our league. Not in a good college league. Probably not in a good high school league if you've got a good defensive end. You're going to kill that tight end. You're going to knock his dick right off. So you know what I've had to find out to do, which is going to lose all of you? When this guy goes down to double team this guy right here, okay, all right, whatever technique he uses, high leg, that guy right there, pinching, mm. okay, or kicking the shit out of the tight end, is going to pick that tackle. Tackle can never get up on the backer because the tight end's block is unsuccessful. Because somebody that plays a seven, okay, and pinches the seven along with the three, you know, like the old pirate, okay, or he just two gaps the hell out of them, he's right in the hole. So what I've had to do is this, okay? Where's the crazy, okay? Where you? You're the three. Danny, come up there and be the second. So I'm the right tackle, okay? My backer's in there somewhere. Now, this is like point 36 if you started from point one, okay? So, but I'm just. <laughs> I'm the tight end, now I gotta block this seven. <laughs> it's so different than on power, the tight end blocking a seven and him being free. So what I've had to do is I've come up and I, and you know, there's a seven, there's a three, I make a call, and the call I make is double F. Double long arm, get a little wider. Double long arm, foot part. Where's my linebacker? Okay, see my linebacker's in there. So when the ball is snapped, okay, mm. double left, double left. This guard's got to cover him, block him, get all of them. Different technique, you can use to block them, but the guard's blocking him. We're always looking for the linebacker. He could run through the A gap. But now, as I'm the tackle, ball is snapped, okay, my backer is somewhere in there. As I go like that, okay, now you pinch. Boom. You see that right there? You see that? You are stronger with two full lockouts. He can feel it right there. Okay. I can put him back on the tight end or at least stop him. Okay. Now, what does my backer do? My backer ends up looping over the top all the way out here. What do you think I do to the tight end? I push him right off. Tight end comes off on the backer. Okay. What if the backer fills here? Okay. Okay. Then I've got to leave this. Okay, and come up on the back of it. Okay, thank you. So my point is, at any time there's a threat and you're the drive man on a double team and the next guy in a th threatening position to pinch or at least play inside eye of the next guy, we have to do this. Now, I'm not going anywhere. Red light. Stay on the line of scrimmage for as long as you have to, and then proceed to knock this guy off or knock that guy. What's the backer doing? Everything we do is eyes on the linebacker. Eyes on the linebacker. We never do anything without looking at the linebacker as we're feeling the down guys. But I mean, there would be an example on two double teams. The other thing is, to me, what I do with this, the, when you're, say you're playing just simple defenses, okay? Whatever, okay? Here's something that people, common sense, 
can't figure out. Hmm. Me too. I mean, until whatever. Let's say I got this, a nose, a backer, you know, the old eagle under whatever, something like that. Okay. So let's say this guy covers him, this guy chips him to that guy. Here comes the running back, and this guy just goes straight ahead. <laughs> so when you're the tackle in the tight end and you're double teaming, and the linebacker is not at least stacked, he's inside at all, that tackle can't go out and cover him. Why do you think? What I'm gonna tell you now is people can't comprehend. They can't put their finger on it. They don't know why. Common sense. Where's the landmark on duo? Mm. The tackle, okay? So these two guys are where in relation to the landmark? Outside the landmark. So whatever these guys do, and I'll just draw, you know, somebody else kicks out to Sam. Uh, but what these two guys got to work this way. Even though this guy may come back and help him, this guy may end up getting him, okay? But if that guy runs through or that guy does that, okay, then the right tackle's got to work with the right guard for the nose, okay? Because the center is going to the backside backer. The center and guard are acing backside. So when I, you got all this shit that happens in there that defensive guys use, and when you're outside the point of attack on duo, you can't just say, well, I'll double the down guy and <laughs> tight end will kiss off, because the ball ain't going there. It may jump out there, which it does a lot. So where is the linebacker? So, uh, so basically, Simplicity on duo would be, okay, let's draw, I'll give you the hardest one first. Let's run a zero stack, you know, one of those tight looks, whatever you want to call it, all right? Okay, I'm the right guard. This guy's a four eye, there's a zero nose. Backside guards going back for somebody, tackle or end or what like that. Okay, what do you think this right guard's got to do? I'm sure you all play that defense where they play a zero stack and a four eye. They call it a tight look, I think. All right, so which gap do you think the center has to protect? Left gap. So that would be the foot he would drop. Brace, brace, as he lunges with his head here. Now, what do you think this guy's got to do? DF. DF. Double stop, double, oh. double left. And how do I double left with my feet? What would that right guard do? He's not going to vacate the line of scrimmage. He's going to watch my feet. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Not out. In, mm. in, out, foot fire. Everything we do, if there's two things, you want to know I do? I fire my feet on almost every play. Mm. Total foot fire. No fucking lead steps. Mm. There is no lead step. You may end up with a forward step on contact as you finish the block, but there's no... Yeah. I'll take a lead step. Locks my hip. If I'm going to take anything, I'm going to take a brace step. That's where you drop it. Okay, but anyway, so in this situation, so what do you think? Let's use some common sense here, which has taken me years to figure out. I'm 80 fucking years old, so I didn't learn this <laughs> in year 61. I didn't. Oh, fuck, it's going to take you guys <laughs> to learn shit. I mean, it is. It's called experience. How is this Go. guy going to block him? What did you say? My first premise is always. Shoulders square. Fucking foot fire. Square. Okay. 
What if I'm off the ball legally, <clears throat> let's say? Hey, I'm off the ball legally and this guy's there. What can I do? I can just move sideways, right? I can I'm, da, 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 da. Because do I want to come down like this? No. Because my because you see that hole I've created? When you block down, I'll block, see I'm just blocking down. When I'm blocking down, you see that hole that's created there? When I end up, however I do it, getting square, there is no hole for that guy to block down when I turn my pads on. Okay, let's say for some reason I feel like I'm on the ball a little too far. You know, I'm, I'm up on the ball. What, what do I, same thing. How do I get in front of a guy that's not in front of me? How do I get in front of a guy that's not in front of me? I got loose ground with my inside foot. We call it scooting. And so what I'm doing, so say, let's say Troy is that 4i guy. Get your phone out of the way. Yes, sir. And I'm the right tackle. Okay, now watch my footwork, a slow motion. I'm in a right-handed stance. I don't have a big deep stagger. I'll go slow motion, boom. I dropped it. This came over. Did I do lose a little ground? Yes. And am I square? Yes. But by the cell, but, but, and through the whole process, I'm always lunging. I'm not going boom, boom, oh, I'm going backwards. I'm always thinking forward, even though I have to lose ground to my inside or outside. What I'm saying, I mean, I'm, I'm surging. I got to get somewhere, but I am in a surge mode. Okay. I know all of you versus that four eye, you turn block down like that. <laughs> The ball jumped outside, your ass would be in the hole, he'll split the gap, okay? The guard will be fucked because the guard can't even help you if he does that double stop sign thing. But what I'm saying is I jumped around from, from uh, zone to duo and I showed you an issue on duo where somebody better help both guys, but who are we all keying? Backer. Guard blocks him. Center blocks him. Tackle blocks him. Guard knocks him off. And if you don't know the exact footwork, if you keep your shoulders <coughs> square, you can block almost any play. Mm. Whether your footwork is perfect, whether the wrong foot is forward or back or whatever, if your shoulders are square. I mean, I mean totally fucking square, okay? And I said, the only time we don't keep the shoulders square would be on the back side of a mid or wide zone because that is more of a stretch play, a toss play, whatever. Inside zone, the backside guard and tackle, their shoulders are square. They may be doing different things with their hands, but they're square. The center is square. It's like Coach showed in some of his video, that center, his center was moving this way, but he came back and helped this way. Generally, on the tight zone, when they don't know what to do, we call it a three-step square shuffle. So what I'm saying is, I'm talking tight zone, okay? I'm talking everybody, let's say, generally except the backside tight end. Okay, this foot drops. Okay, this foot cut, drops a little bit, boom, boom. Third step is high. Okay, boom, boom, boom. But because your best contact is always made with your third step being high, being forward, being a lead step, but it's not the initial step. Mm. Best contact, okay, when you, are just blocking a guy on your edge is with a forward leg. You know, you're blocking inside, you're kissing off. Uh, you're, you're on the double team. I'm the outside guy, I'm double teaming down inside. This leg, my inside leg being high and going forward, 
galloping, whatever the hell you want to call it, coming off on the backer is better than whatever. Now, if I got to use my double this, I'm only going to go to the high leg to the guy I'm working with. If I'm the guard and I'm doing a double stop sign and I have to fire my feet, okay, and I'm working with the center, then that leg will end up being high. What time is it? No, he doesn't want no break. He wants to keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We take a break, come back 10, 12 minutes. But see, we're just answering questions, and I haven't even got to what I want to cover, which is okay. Are we okay with what we're doing? Perfect. Hey, if you don't know anything Thanks, from me, from me, you don't have to agree with me. Keep your shoulders square. Square. And your feet are always foot firing. All right, questions from the chat, Coach. How do you handle stunts by the D line when running wide zone? That's too much. Of, that's too much of a question. I covered it. Yeah, guy asked it, but you got it, Coach. Where, where is he? I covered it. Yeah, you got it. If anybody's got a question for Coach in the chat, uh, no, go ahead no, and put no, it, no, 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 and no, I'll no, ask no, you later. No, no the, I mean, they're nice. But these are people on YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the, the, uh, the end of the tackle that's on that inside technique on that four eye. Guards foot fire, double F. Double F, I call it. Double, so double. See, this is double. You have two pillars. Double foot fire in the direction of the back. Not very far. Where's the back? Where's the back? Yeah. And then the line why we can be out of the Okay, so you need coach to move? Is he gonna put film on? Okay, so he's not gonna send him film. Yeah, you're, okay. all good. you're good. You're juiceless, you're useless, man. All right. I gotta go coach quarterback. Okay. You gonna film it? Yeah, I'm videoing everything. What's that? You're out of here right after this. I got a new shirt. I gotta have you represent the new team, you know? Uh, they get Coach Dim with his shot. Right back, yeah, so yeah absolutely. Whatever you want, yeah. Coach. Yeah. He wears the extra large. All right. I'll give him one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the coach, dude. Isn't he? Last night was special, wasn't it? Did you ever think that you would be at a table with that guy? No, I just listening to the history of it. And, you know, that was the first 30 minutes just hearing about all the stops that he had and all the guys that he coached. I mean, that's worth the trip. But then, then he got into technique. Correct. Best session I've ever been at. Last night was the best session. Aww. Yeah. No, coach, I'm serious. I mean, you know, you why? Get, Tell them why it was the best. Coach, you go in and sit, and they'll give you a little bit. Some of them wouldn't tell you anything. You know, they don't give you nothing you can use. I mean, I can take away what we saw at the dinner table last night. You know, that, I, to me, when I go to a clinic, I want to take something back, you know, that I can actually use. And, uh, I'll just play the gap schemes. What kind of I love it. Well, the gap going down. Where's the guy? Who's the zone guy? It's the same thing. What's your boy ask me? What's my best zone gap play? What do you remember? Yeah. What's your coach ask me in podcast? You fired? Yeah. That's why. That's why I started the podcast. He could, he threw me for a loop there. I thought it was some kind of new trend. Yeah, the, uh, your interview <laughs> is the reason I started the podcast. Was it was because it was good. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I took over. And I said, "This is going to be easy." My first one sucked. 
The dude didn't want to talk. I was like, this is going to be easy. Yeah, it's easy when the other guy wants to talk. I was having to generate conversation. Yeah. And I was having to generate. I, mean, I was talking hey. through you, through them to talk to you. <laughs> hey, I've had college coaches come in. I told Coach uh, Emery, we had a guy come in. And he just sitting there. Yeah, they don't talk. I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> they don't talk. <laughs> I said, why are you here? Yeah. I mean, Colorado State offers a lot of coaches in here. Hmm. Where do I should be? Yeah, I got to go. Coach, I got to go see Dub. I know you do, but I know Dub. I got Dub soon. Dub's dude. Yeah, I know he's dude. But Dub, Dub's going to be in line for a while. I'm going to coach. That's true. Well, how have you got video? That's what I got. That's why I got it. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier. Like, going to my arms, it's like. You need to learn this. We got a force. This is football. What did you pick up right there? It's a big eye. No, that was what. That's what I was looking at. I was looking defensively when you were talking about. So, what we talking about the reach You know, guys stepping like this. Why not to worry about the reach? Because what are you going to do there? You're going to knock his ass back in. Hmm. You know, I mean, that's – you pick up just as much defensively yes. as you do offensively. And that's – don't just go to D-line and stuff. You go to as much as you Because you got to know what you know what the enemy's doing. You know? guys, he studies the problems. He studies what the defense does. That's what he charts. Yeah. yeah. He ain't charting with He's the offense. He's up there talking about how, what the defense are doing. Yeah. He knows all the problems. He studies the problems, not what works right. All right, so we're going to be back here in a little bit. Coach, uh, I'm going to walk around and show you all the clinic. For everybody that's still in the chat. He's a, you know, you don't mind him. Coach Bill Best. <laughs> There's the clinic. I'm persistent. I'm, I got to quit. <laughs> I'm a pit bull. That's why I coach for this guy. Sure. WWE, yes. Mouth of the South. You know why they, you know why they give the wrestlers managers? Because they can't. The reason they give the wrestlers managers is because they can't talk. The manager, yeah, they're, they're the talker. Yeah, dude, I know guys that were pro wrestlers. Me and my buddy Kyle were better than them. Like we're better. Just turn the camera on. Let's go. I came. I was working the UT football team. We started coaching, and so we worked. Couple of times. So I'm in Allen, Texas. Right now. Wow. Allen, yeah. Texas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, Billy Best and I are real good friends. Now. He told me about it back when he was coming to recruit me. I played at Baylor. Oh, you did? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I played for Chris Lane, Kevin Cash, and Billy Best. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, was it a uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. all action time. Yeah. I was watching some of your stuff the other day, though, and I was like, I was, you know, I watch it all the time, but I was going through some the older, your, your four man, you know, the, you know, the different, the different looks you can get on Pat, kind of on Pass Pro, Knock Away, Bora, Bull, and all that. And I saw Mike on there going through it, so I sent it to him. I was like, man, I said, you still look like this? He goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a yeah. 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 He was kind of, he, he all, I loved him. But yeah. I was, I'm like, you know, you put your toe in the middle of the I mean, he, he, I mean, he put, just the way he was. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. But he was good enough to be a starter. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. He's a, like I said, he's in the, I see him at the group because I have a daughter that's an eighth grader. I don't visit maybe in high school, but I see him at club, uh, club volleyball across the nation. I run into him every once in a while. Great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you too. You have to get your people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. They're on food like every place. They'll take all the food. They'll shoot. And so, like, we even call them, like, we're just proper. Our kids, our kids, so that kind of just put them on there. I'm actually.
Great stuff, Coach. So I know you said Q and A. What were you? What are you trying to cover? I know it's kind of open ended today, right? Whatever we get there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do whatever you gotta do. Okay, here we go. I think they got an eraser down here. Because you don't think you just go. I don't think either, but I'm going to race for you. Yeah, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, sir. MK, my day's been great, okay? I mean, I've got the greatest offensive line coach of all time here. Yeah. That's one of my middle school fans, coach. She's a Steelers fan. She wants Mike Tomlin fired. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's what she wants. Wow. I told her, I said, just wait around long enough, everybody gets fired. Coach has never been under 500. Yeah. And he's from Virginia. What are you in there? <laughs> Gerard Mayo. The good. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so let's say we were wanting a mid or a wide zone into some sort of a look with a four eye where this guard and tackle got those two guys. This one, the guard would shuffle because it's a wide zone. Okay, he reads this backer. This guy uses inside footwork, even though it's a play going out here. And when I say inside footwork, I don't necessarily mean that he steps on the guard. I'm just saying is if this is the seven technique and I'm the right tackle, I'm going to start doing it. And I, I'm looking at that line, and i got two hands, two hands locked out, and then what the fuck's happening? I mean, uh, in the guard, when he shuffles, okay, and the shuffle is nothing but in slow motion, would be a kick, a kick, a slide, you know, boom, boom, real quick, I'm looking at the backer, okay? What does the backer do? <clears throat> Let's say the backer really scrapes hard. What do you think this guy does? He goes and kills that end. But let's say this backer just hangs, okay? What do you think he does? Puts a hand here, comes off on that linebacker. Okay? So that's why the guard being uncovered, okay, bides some time by shuffling so he can make the decision rather than just going out and killing the four eye. Because what they want you to do is they want this guy to kill him Okay, they want this guy to go like that, and then when this guy goes straight ahead, I mean, whatever, the only choice this guy has is to kind of drive him, and this guy is right in the back space, and he cuts back, and this linebacker falls back. So the only time that, say, the tackle versus the four eye will come off on the backer is if he's sure that backer is scraped, and then he'll turn him off. Then the ball, if it goes here, will go inside of that backer that scrapes, ewing him out, if you want to call it that. Coach, would you have the right guard here, DF, just in case of that nose guard slant? No, turn? because it's not a duo play. Okay. It's not a play where they're gapping down. The back guard and the center got those two guys. Uh, uh, it's just tight to. Yeah. It's just tight. Okay. Thank you. 
no, 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 on tight zone, they would, these two guys would still be working this way. Yeah. The only time this guy would go worry about him is if you're running some sort of a dual or a gap play. <laughs> okay, so what I want to talk about now is just right from the get-go, I did it last night, is the body posture, uh, yes. Who's young? 21, oh, you're young. You got to get up there, coach. No, he, he, oh, he, he was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's not the same one as last night. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, he'll, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now. When you do everything from a three-point stance, you're afraid they're going to stand straight up. Okay, yeah. Coach Sylvia, you missed one of the points I was making. Uh, I had to check out of my room, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. What I was saying is if we ran a mid-zone and this guy was in a four-eye and they have a stack, then these two guys have got somebody out here. And the tackle would actually use inside foot fire work while this guy uses the shuffle and reads him. If the backer stays wide, he hammers that guy, okay? If the backer falls back, he'll put one hand on him and come off, and the guard and the tackle will stay on the end. That's why we shuffle the uncovered lineman on the mid zone. Even though most people would let this guy go here and this guy go there. Because this guy coming straight ahead makes the ball go up inside and this guy falls back. So people that really know how to two-gap a guy, which means you charge like a mother through the inside shoulder of a, of a blocker, it's a bitch. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is <coughs> where you're, you want to stay in a two-point stance, okay? So everything that we do, okay, recently is kind of blocking like this, okay? Here's your head, here's your hands, your back is rounded, arched, whatever. Rather than the flat back, use your head, fall on your face, lead step, blah, blah, blah. So the best position, if you just break down a little bit, buddy, okay? All right, put your feet a little wider. Okay. So let's say it's the right guard. You can take a little stagger with your right foot. Attaboy. Okay, bend down a little more. Okay, attaboy. All right, now I'm going to pull you. Put your feet a little wider. Attaboy. Okay, I'll sit your ass down. You <laughs> not a great athlete. I know, I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, baby. All right, all right, all right. Now, 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 you can put your hands almost clap them together. Yeah, I don't care what you do with your hands, but your hands are going to be in front of you a little bit, okay? But what I'm saying to you, do you see that position, that body position? He's like a gorilla in the zoo. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Two things. Yeah. So what I'm saying, if yes. If you have any zoos in your area and you ever saw a gorilla, <laughs> their ass is on the ground and they're moving 100 miles an hour. Now, a human isn't an animal, so obviously they're not going to move that fast. But the two-point stance is trained by constantly sitting in that position, okay? So if you get away from me that way, and I send you in that position, okay, you're breaking down, attaboy. Put, put your knees out, okay, your toes out a little bit, attaboy. Okay, you can stick your hands in front of you and almost cup them like this. Okay, yeah. Mm. Uh, that's what Strollo used to call uh, rolling the meatballs. But I'm not even talking about rolling the meatballs so much anymore, but that's okay. So my point is, now having that person move right, left, forward, sideways, and the better they get it, good at it, the faster their feet can move. If they're too low, they can't move, you know, it's awkward. If they're too high, then everybody's, the head coach is gonna to say to you, well, fuck, he, he, your linemen are too high, okay? So what I'm saying to you is, now, let's do the next thing before you do anything. All I want you to do, and it has to be this fast, okay? Your feet go a thousand miles an hour, okay? There's no like big steps, 
second steps, blah, blah, blah. Everything is, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that's a boom. Okay, so all I want you to do is fire your feet right there in place. Yeah, yeah. Don't go forward. Just stay right there. Okay, fire your feet. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. Fire your feet faster. Faster. All right, go this way. Faster, faster, faster. faster. A little more steps. Yeah, go five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> but, but, but even what he did, even what he did is when he went this way, this foot came too far this mm. way. Okay, it's like, buh, buh, buh. I mean, this second step goes that far. And you might have to take 10,000 of those little steps rather than three or four big ones. Okay, so now almost don't move the second step at all as you're going in that direction. Right. Okay, move your feet. There you go. Faster, 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 faster. Come forward, faster. But down, but down. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now. Most people would say the elbow should be in, okay, and your hands can be up, okay, because you don't want to have your elbows out, okay, like that, okay, unless you're doing a double pillar, okay, and then we use the heels of the hands. Like uh, Strollo's tip of the spear, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're, uh, in fact, while well, I got you right there, remember that last topic we were talking about? Back up a little bit. Look how much space you can reach. Lock both arms out. Okay. Look how much space you can reach. Uh, now just push on me there. Okay. All right. When I come, give me a little shot. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Boom. Okay. Now, if I'm going to slant to you, I might be there. You might hit me right there, here. Yeah, yeah okay. Back. Boom. Okay. Boom. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is that he's playing long with both arms. Mm. Okay. We either want you to play long with both arms in front of you. Okay. With one arm in front of you and the other arm okay. oh. back. Back, back, there you go. Bend down. Butt down. All right. All right, now, what I'm saying to you, this is, relates to a lot of different things. Now put both hands straight out. Okay. All right. Now drive this arm back. Yeah. This arm becomes longer than two hands. One arm is longer than two. Particularly, step forward with your right foot. Yeah, okay. And that's what we use an uptick on pass pro, but I'm not trying to get there. My point is playing long. Okay, you can move over. Oh, good, thank you. Or sit down there. <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I think even my friends here, who are the smartest guys in the country, <laughs> they are, they are, but I'm, I'm, I'm making a point, okay? You really know how to play long. What I mean by playing long, let's say I have to use, you know, I don't want to use this. Okay, I don't want to use this. Okay, yeah. Okay, so say I don't care what I'm, I'm the center, I'm the right guard, I'm the right tackle, and I'm doing this on the guy to my outside. Look, what am, what am I into the block? Mired. mired. I'm fucking mired. Okay, what can the defensive guy do to me if I'm mired into a block? Hold you. Grab, grab you. you. Keep you from getting to the back. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, good. Okay. All right, now. All right, now I'll just do a shoulder wreck. All right? Okay, go ahead, grab me. Yeah, oh, shit. When you play short, you don't have enough separation to see where you want to go. So what I'm saying is that when you're playing long, okay, so let's say I'm the right guard, and this guy's in a four eye, okay, and I'm running duo, and I'm the high leg guy. I'm talking a lot of verbiage you don't want to understand, but as <laughs> I'm coming like this, blah, 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 boom. I mean, boom, okay? All right, now I don't know, did I hit him in the chest? Did I hit him in the eye? Fuck. But what I'm saying to you is, is I'm starting to foot fire and I'm starting to bring this up. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. Okay. 
do you really know how to play law? It's from the ground up. Okay, you sit down. What I mean by the ground up, when this hand comes, it's coming from the ground. I don't mean my hand's on the ground. It's not coming up like this and out like that. Mm. It's coming right now. Pendulum. Okay, it's coming right. Okay, so if you stood right there where you go and say I wanted to, oh, yeah, you stand up with an attaboy, just be right there and say I wanted to put, I'm going straight ahead and I want to put two hands on. So I said, boom, boom. Are your guys' hands that fast? It's an immediate lockout right now. <clears throat> And it's called proactive, okay? There's no break in the elbow. Now, there may be a little break in the elbow because the, the hand and the arm always have a little, the way you're built, there's a little down and out, or up, down, and in, or whatever you call it. You know what I mean? You're trying, you're trying to get a full fucking lockout I don't give a shit if you say you're going to pro whatever the word is, pronate, or uh, break your elbows. No. Bullshit. You want separation. How much separation can you get? How much separation? Are you a flipper guy? Are you a shoulder guy? Some people say the center, particularly. Let's say he's got to snap the ball in his right hand, okay? All right, and then this guy's on my shade. Well, it's hard for the center to snap the ball and whatever, but it's not hard for the center to snap the ball because I did this last night. When the center snaps the ball, where is his right hand? It's low, right? So for him to snap it, whatever step he's taken, to go boom, boom, boom. Now, I can't go... This way, you know, you know, like I'm uncovered, boom, 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 okay? But I can come from under and turn the thumb out, hit with the tip of the spear, or if I have to hit with my fingertips, okay? So what I'm saying to you is, do your guys get long, thanks, do your guys get long on every play. Long. That's a first. foot fire, playing long, <clears throat> getting square. Um, so, uh, and Coach, we want that separation so we can keep our eyes on that linebacker. You the want the separate. Well, common sense experience. You want to play long so you get the first touch. touch. That should have come out of your mouth. Yeah, like, so the combination of seeing the backer, first touch wins. First touch wins. <coughs> Whether you use a one arm or two arms. Oh, true. Yeah, true. Okay. I mean, and I'm talking fucking long. <laughs> now, now, let's say you guys why, okay? Maybe it's a pass or something, but I'm gonna hold my hands, say here. And then when I get to about the time when I can shoot it, okay, I mean I can't, I can't get them right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit. So that's why I would think if nobody cares and your head coach doesn't care, when you're in your stance, I'm okay like this. I'm not. Look, at my hands are here, here. Still, when I move, I still get but if I can move independently because what happens is when they rest their hands here, they feel more balanced. Like I feel more balanced. Here I don't feel like, oh, well, if, uh, but if you could have the hands almost to the full lockout, now look at how, how far I have to go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? So really, if you were almost fully locked out and you haven't hit the guy yet, okay, watch what I'm trying to say. Just that little two inch blow. So what I'm saying is, where you're coming from here to here, the full length thing, if you were locked out and you just did that, boom, huh, that six inch 
jab is stronger than shit. Yeah. And Bruce Lee, boom. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, uh, Scott Peters, who's the expert on the martial hmm. arts of the hands, I mean, he's always talking about the heel of the hand, you know, turning the door knob. There's your strong point. There's the tip of the spear. But I don't know that you always get that perfect whatever. Hell, you might hit him with your fingertips, <laughs> okay? I mean, it might happen that you just hit him because I feel more dexterous you feel. with the open fingers. Yeah. See those fingers? Boom. Okay. You feel it. Yeah. 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 Now they all take yeah. their fingers out, but they set the other. So, you know. Anyway, so um, so let's talk about rooting, okay? Which most of the guys know, but uh, rooting <coughs> is kind of common sense. Just don't step forward. Mm. Don't lead step. Don't lead step. Okay. Now, it's okay that if I'm the chip guy, you know what I mean? You're like a double team and they call that get to the high leg. And if I'm like the white tap, <coughs> you know, Scott, you be. I mean, hey, you sit up there so I can video. Yeah. No, no. Like, okay. You be the postman. Okay. All right. And I'm the guy coming down. It's okay that this guy leads steps like. Whether he moves his back foot first, whether he moves laterally first, closer, <coughs> but as he goes forward, that's okay. Yeah, he's a forward step. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about when you're blocking a man, for example, there really, in my terms, there really shouldn't be a time that you step like that versus that guy, or you step like that on that guy. Okay? So what I'm saying as far as rooting the feet, Okay, he said, thank you, sir. Is that you are strongest where one foot is behind you or both feet are behind yes. you while your upper body is lunging forward. You're firing out, you're going forward. If the guy moved, say this, I'm firing out on this guy, and this guy moves for some reason. Okay, and I'm really lunging. Okay, there's a good drill where I put a guy on me, and I'm got my feet wounded, and I uh, and then I regain my balance rather than the guy falling in face. That's why that tail is always down, the ass is down, the head is up. So even if you're lunging and crawling that you can regain your balance, okay? So that'd be a good drill, okay? So for example, let's say you get up, and I want you to just pretend like you're lunging on this guy. Bend your feet and don't even step, okay? So, so you know, put your ass down, and just kind of go forward and gain your balance. I'm gonna move this chair, so keep your hands off it, okay? Go ahead, lunge forward. Go ahead, just lunge. lunge. Yeah, don't step. <laughs> no, you're not, because you're going to regain your balance. Go ahead. You don't even step. Go back again and just lunge forward. Now, now just lunge. Steve, go Steve. Steve, just go forward and catch it. Ready? Set. But don't move both feet. Go ahead. Move the feet. Yeah, both feet at the same time. There you go. All right. They're, they are going to, because they're in that body posture with their ass down, even though they're surging, they're going to be able to regain their balance as long as you practice that. Okay, fellas, we're going to do the lunge drill. You don't ever know when the guy's coming. You can't fall on your fucking face. Now, if your ass is up and you're taking a lead step and you're old school there, you're going to fall right on your face. But if your ass is down, and your feet are behind you, you will catch yourself, okay? So let's not worry about that as much as what does the feet rooting look like, <coughs> okay? So watching me as I strike this wall, okay? 
Look where my feet are. Okay. Okay. Now, let's say I did this. I braced this foot. See, I dropped this foot because I'm worried about a linebacker blitzing. I'm double team. I'm the postman. Boom. 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 Okay. One foot can be behind. One foot can be under me. Okay, you're a center versus a zero nose. You've got to drive the zero nose. Both feet can hop back because when I hop both feet back, I've lengthened my entire trunk to create a stronger lung <clears throat> rather than stepping forward. So rooted feet just means that your feet, one foot is behind you, the other foot is under you, both feet may be behind you, but you're not leaning <coughs> and stepping, okay? So when that tackle versus the four eye on a mid or wide zone, okay, when he gets over here like this to, uh, to get in front of the guy, <coughs> right there, <coughs> his feet are rooted. They're parallel, or whatever the hell you want to call it, right? They're rooted into the ground, that's where you're the strongest. It's not where this foot's going like this, or this foot's going down like this, whatever. So the rooting of the feet come naturally as long as you teach them how to foot, fire, and lunge. Foot, fire, and lunge. Lunge is the word that the old schoolers would use Roll. to mean fire out, come off the ball, okay? The way Strollo would told, taught me at first, it's like the guy on the top of a teeter totter. When you're on the top of it, you feel like you're gonna you're gonna fall off that teeter totter if you don't hold on to that to that bar. So, is there any questions, okay, about these three things? And, and then I'll move on. Okay, we're gonna talk the body posture. How do you do the body posture? You go on the internet and you look at how sumo wrestlers pound their legs, pound their legs. Now they're in that low position, and then at the end they squat right yeah. down. Boom. That's how they end the drill. They do a thousand of them a day. Now you're not going to do a thousand of them. But what I'm saying to you, they break those muscles down in those thighs, in those quads, and very uh, bad, like the gorilla. Mm. Yes. Okay, now, body posture, foot fire, okay, uh, or rooting. Any questions on any of those three? Now we're talking generalities now, all right? We're not picking specific plays, okay? Okay, we're good. All right, so let's talk about what a brace foot is, okay? All right, okay, let's say I just got to cover this guy up. Ball's coming right up my ass. I don't have any help from anybody. I'm the right guard. This guy's a two technique, a tight three, something like whatever you want to call it, all right? Old school, okay, step forward, okay? Locks the hips, okay, whatever. Doesn't lower your center. The only way you lower your center is if you use the old school flat back, put your head in, fall on your face. So when you brace a foot, okay, I'll brace my outside foot. See what it does? It lowers my what? Lowers my center of gravity. You see what I've done? Now my upper trunk is still starting to Okay, let's say I drop, say this guy's a three, and I'm the right guard on a double team to a linebacker. Right there, Danny, stand right there for me, buddy. You'd be a linebacker standing right there. Yep. Now that linebacker could run through the hole, okay? Boom. Me and the tackle are double teaming for that guy. So I'm the left guard, so I press. You see what I've done? I drop that foot just in case that after I lunge, See me lunge, okay, and this foot will come, but I don't necessarily have to pick this foot up, all right, or all right, as I'm into this guy, okay, 
I can come off of because that foot is back. Okay? So I can brace off my outside foot. I can brace off my inside foot. Pouncey for the Steelers, when he had to block a zero nose, he did this. Okay? A right guard versus a two, or maybe a tight three, a real tight three. Okay? See that surge? Yeah. yeah. I want that surge. Yeah. Okay. You look pretty good there, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> I got arthritic knees and I got a hip transplant. Um, so, is there any questions, okay, that we're talking about the body posture, foot fire, rooting, lunging, bracing one foot or the other? Any questions about playing long? Okay. All my buddies that I see on the internet, guys I work with, although they think they're doing it, I'm past pro. Maybe Marable did it once. <laughs> I call it the up kick, but I'm not going to go through the up kick because it's too much, too long, too much stuff. But they up kick, they use the outside pillar, but they don't really step with the outside foot. To do the up kick properly, you've got to step with that outside foot. There's a big fucking step. I mean, you're almost off balance. Because if I just do this, okay, I'm not as close as when that outside foot moves to the mat. Okay? So it's like same hand, same foot. So the up kick on pass pro is used more on the man side guard. When the center's sliding to his left, I'm the right guard, I got this guy alone, that when I up kick, the strike, somewhere down the middle to the outside number, with the inside foot being back, because the inside foot ends up being back when I step with the front side foot forward, it's automatically back. This hand low to clamp, so I take away the outside with the hand of the foot, and I take away the inside with a little clamp hand that if he goes inside, I can clamp him and stop his inside move. But most people, when they think clamp, think here. Clamp him on the hip. Okay? Clamp the hip. Okay? Because they're a little more vulnerable to clamp the hip than the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And when you clamp the guy and you start moving to your inside to stop him, okay? You're either going to end up throwing them with your opposite hand, ass blocking them. Uh, I'm not trying to get into the update, but I'm saying that on that particular play, to do the up kick, what's an up kick? Well, the outside foot's the kick foot, and if you do an up kick, you take the outside foot, you move it up, forward. You, you don't move it up, you step up. Okay, so I, I got off topic there a little bit. Okay, is there any? Okay, now let's talk about covering the guy again. Just the plain cover. Okay, we're running a play <clears throat> up the ass of the right guard. Okay, I'm going to just get off of this guy. Okay, first of all, okay, now we're not talking about a double team, I'm talking about a right guard versus. Maybe a tight three, or not a two, a right guard versus a tight three. I'm running the old inside zone. You know, it might be, maybe you're running for the butt of the tackle on some sort of a uh, zone play. You know what I mean? Like, you're under center and you're running right here, or you're running right here. Uh, it could be a stretch play that you're running right at the butt of the tackle. Or, you know, whatever. All right, and this guy is slightly outside of you. You're alone. You gotta cover him, okay? So now we would not drop the inside foot. We would brace with the outside foot, okay? This foot braces. As I'm gonna lunge, my head is slightly outside, and this hand <coughs> is that warlock hand. 
This hand is the lift hand, under the armpit, clogging, whatever. Rather than use the word double under, which is really both hands coming under the old, it's old now because we quit pushing like that because pushing like that puts your ass like this. We want to lift. So the old double under, okay? I changed the old double under now. The old double under used to be guys would bring two hands up and they'd curl the guy. But what was happening is you were curling the guy right into your own body. You weren't keeping any separation. So really, on the double under, I changed the word to double arrows, double arrows. And that's where both hands, okay, just like that. Now, what happens from there? I might have to stuff him, stuff him. Maybe he collapses my arm, and I might have to hop back and start over again, and maybe then I do clamp him. Or maybe I'm here, and he's working out, and I torque him out or he's working in it and I talk, but I don't want to go to the curl right now. The double under. I want to go to double arrows. Keep the lock up. Keep separation. The point is, if I'm just dry blocking a guy, because he might have the nature, okay, let's you get over here, okay? And I covered this a little bit earlier, so I may have confused you. All right, so I'm going to drop this foot. You got to grab that shoulder, okay? Yeah, just grab it down and whatever. Okay, I'll start over here. Ready? Get back. Okay, ready? Set, hut. You see what I've done with that? Now, the second hand I'm lunging, boom, is an under arrow, whatever you want to call it. The reason is, if I just use two hands there and I'm grabbing pull. So I found that out that really, if they don't grab, say you just don't, you know, you just let me do nothing, okay? As I go like that, and this hand goes like this, this hand be becomes a little higher uh, arrow. So it's it's almost like I got under his tip or under that hand lever, and this hand is a little lower, and it still might get under his pads. The outside hand is high. The only reason it's high is to flick off that because we play some guys, particularly on short yardage, we fire out 100 miles an hour, they give us a swim move, we fall right on our face. So that's why the cover block was more of a, still coming with both hands long, double arrows. So this is a double under. This is a double arrow. From a double arrow, I can torque the guy, right? I can lift the guy. If he breaks me down, I mean, I got no choice but to lift him, okay? I very rarely ever want to shove a guy. Look at, I know most of you teach this. You come off the ball and you two hands like that. Well, look at my hips. When my hands come under like this, I can bring my hips, okay? So anyway, uh, what I was talking about is I saw too many times where the defensive guy, particularly that big tall guy that played for Baltimore. I don't know what team he's in now. He's played about 11 years for Miami. Uh, somebody's got to know his name. Campbell? Uh, Calias Campbell. Good job. Every time. Swat and swim. Or grab and swim. Even on the run. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Your arms may not even be long enough to they get avoid into the midsection, but your arms might be able to get underneath his elbow yeah. and lift. But what I'm saying to you, there's an example of a plane long. Um, okay. Okay. Is there any questions? And Coach Steve did it earlier. What the match block is? Matching means. The ball's going inside of you somewhere, and the guy you're blocking is Steve. wide enough Steve. to eliminate him. To eliminate him. He's got to be ready, Coach, to be, good, no, to be your dummy if you need him. I don't want to scrub his technique. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you, the guy is wide enough, the ball's going inside of you, so however many footwork you've got to use, okay, me, 
I take that outside hand, boom, hit them right in the gut, boom, okay? And then as I'm hitting them in the gut, I drop this foot again, so this opens up this hip to throw it. Whether you get your hand under his armpit or you get a clamp on his bicep, eliminate it, throw him out, throw him out, but throw him out staying square, okay? So here's the guy, okay? I want to move over here like this. I hit him in the gut. I want this hand to clamp him and throw. Throw. Eliminate. Now, if he's too tight to you, you can't do that. So you've got to have enough inside out leverage on him to do that. If he's tight to you, then you've either got to base block him or get into him and torque him and you get help on a double. But that was what the match block was. So you got the match, you got the cover, you got the hook. Remember I talked about the hook block versus a loose guy? You know, I would take one brace step, I'd come over, my third step is high, I knock the pad back, okay? He thinks I'm hooking him, this hand comes underneath, to lift him right off the ground. Lift him right, if he starts to move, I pull his hand out and I throw him. But on the hook block, okay, uh, Danny, if you come up here, the reach block, per se, okay, and as he turns around, okay, okay, and I want to reach this guy. This hand knocks, I don't know, where is it? That's his outside pet. Knocks it back with this foot going forward. So I've got to get over here, boom. Watch what I do with this arm. Boom. Boom. Okay. For, I'm using an up kick on his outside leg, but it might take me a couple of steps to get over here, okay? And then this hand, the second hand, comes with a lift to lift him, lift him. You can lift him right out of his shoes. If he goes out, you throw him out. If he goes in, you got him. But if he really goes in, you throw him to your next guy with whichever hand is free. It might be my inside hand, and you go to the next guy because you're off the ball, because we're off the ball on the wide or mid zone to do the hook. So the hook, I learned this from the Redskins 40 years ago, uh, Joe Gibbs, Joe, Joe, Joe Bugle. Bugle. They knocked the outside shoulder back. Well, it's best to knock the outside shoulder back with the outside foot going forward, because same hand, same foot going forward gets more momentum to get the first touch. Um, so, uh, okay, let's talk about, like, pass blocking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be run blocking. How do you stay square? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I can't fall. I think I'm going to move it. No, no, I'm going to get up on it. Oh, you want to get on something? Or just, we'll get here where you can see. They can see you, coach. No. You two chairs? Three? Well, uh, I gotta think what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Well, coach, most high school coaches still teach the two hand punch and pass pro. So if you could talk about hands working independently after this. Okay. There you go. Hey, give me a hand. You need me? Yeah, you need yeah hold on to him. <laughs> okay, if I fall, I'm going to break this card. I got an implant. Hey, okay. Steve, get his right, hand. Now, if I'm moving my right foot, okay, because I'm moving my right foot. Got it. Most, Steve's got you, coach. Most, most guys will move like that. You know what I've just done? If I'm even kicking, you know what I mean? Like, say this foot wants to be a kick foot because I'm moving my right. Watch what I do with this right foot. What did I do with it? Try to pigeon toe. You see what I did my pigeon toe? Now, it'll never be perfect because most of us walk with our toes out. But if you can at least get it square, then, what? Well, hey, you know how tackles turn on pass pro and they open up like that? If you force that thing to be square as you're moving, okay, then, thank you. Yes, sir. Then, that is the key to your staying square. I'll bet you if you watch your tackles on pass pro, I don't give a shit if I'm watching the national championship. Uh, Tennessee, I mean, uh, Michigan, 
Okay, the right tackle will mark a white guy. He'll turn like this, and he'll be like this. No, pass blocking on the right tackle. I'm exaggerating a slight bit. Watch how square I am. Now I'm blocking that guy out there. Watch how square. None of your guys are square. You may tell me they are, but I guarantee you, I won't see them, whatever the angle they take. And I, I'm not proposing to tilt the shoulders inside because they are too you. far away from the guy. You, you hold your weight inside. You hold it. But what I'm saying is, I pump the outside arm, but try to keep the outside foot pigeon toed, which will never get perfectly toed in. But if you can keep it straight, they won't turn. And then the second step will come like this. First step here, second step here. But what your guys do, if you put the film, this foot will go like this, this foot will go like this. They'll continue like that. So it's almost like you have to, Danny, can you come up here? Yep. Okay, so Danny's going to his right. Move up just a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So you go to your other stop. Stay there. Okay, just work to your right. Not that way. You're going to the Okay, keep going. Okay, I'm not letting him turn his shoulders. You know what I mean? I'm making him keep his shoulders. I'm just moving to your right. Okay, now let's change this angle. I'll put you on angle B, right? Keep your shoulders foot, okay? I'll put you on more of a vertical angle. Your guys all do this. Because they don't know how to pump the outside arm getting there which will keep your shoulders square. Don't tilt, I mean, you don't have to tilt, but it's the foot. It's the outside foot that you're allowing to do that. So if you can take the outside knee and drive it in, that'd be the same thing as trying to get your outside foot square or pigeon toed. But like I say, I'm duck footed and most, I mean, Running backs, the good ones are duck footed. I mean, they, whatever. I mean, so when, when you when, when I when you walk that way, you you open up that foot. You don't walk like that. But that's in on, on another mode. Speaking of the same thing, let's say you had a tight end that had to block an inside linebacker. I don't play like dual that's going up the middle. I'll just give you an example. So the tight end will come down like this. He doesn't have to work with anybody. And then he's going to hit that linebacker. And that linebacker is going to fill. That tight end, okay, block you down, he ought to do, even if that guy's going to fill, as fast as he can, and then get as square as he can. But when you're line blocking, say, a tight end or a wing down on a guy, okay, uh, you're turning. And when they fill, you're always in a bad position. Uh, so, Coach, a lot of times when it, like the players will say, hey, Coach, he's so wide. That's why I'm turning. That's why I'm turning. That's why we change our angles of the A, B, or C. Change it, yeah. Well, if you use angle A, which is real flat angle, 30 degrees, yeah. you can get on that guy before he takes two steps. So, I mean, as fast as you can, you're one, two, and really your best contact on angle A this one is like one, two, up kick. Because okay. you're going to stay inside out yeah. on angle A. Because if you go too far, you'll get beat inside. Because you're too flat. But flat is okay. That's the angle A. Okay, so we're going to finish now with any. Now, really, we just jumped around. I didn't show any video. Maybe I made a point or two. Is there any? Ending questions. Well, the high school coaches, they still teach the two-hand punch on the pass pro, Coach. What would well, you say to okay. that? That's, that's yeah, but show, tell us your way. One hand, like, 
like if I'm size outside, I'm an outside hand guy. Poof. Whether I up kick or not, all right? One arm, one arm is longer than two. It's common sense. That's why you drive this elbow back, okay? And if you've got a guy that's a little wide, okay, and you want to use the up kick, first step is a little kick step, and the last, the second step is back a little. Boom. You know, snap. When you take the second step back on the up kick, it lets you lengthen the punch. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Coach, stay right there. If you left guard, two eyes. Talk about the uh, up, uh, up post. Up post, up okay. Yeah. Uh, if I had a guy in a two-eye, I prefer to drop my inside foot and use my outside hand. I don't want to give my inside right. foot. Thank but you. if I do want to use the inside hand, I'll step forward with my inside foot and I'll grab the bicep. bicep. I won't hit him in the chest because the bicep is the closest thing to go to get the quarterback. Okay, we're done. Perfect. Thank you, Coach.